In today's video we'll talk about the benefits of glutathione and whether it really works for skin whitening. Let's get into it. Glutathione is an antioxidant produced by the cells in the body made of a combination of the amino acids cysteine, glutamate and glycine. As we age, the glutathione levels in our body reduces and it can also be depleted by other factors such as stress, poor diet, chronic diseases and environmental toxins. Glutathione is important for the immune system, DNA synthesis, detoxification, repairing damaged cells and is also needed to regenerate other antioxidants such as vitamin C and vitamin E. Let's look at the evidence behind Behind taking glutathione as a supplement. Glutathione is found in almost every cell in the body and is particularly concentrated in the liver and the brain. Low glutathione levels have been linked to neurodegenerative disorders such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, multiple sclerosis and ALS. Animal studies have found taking the precursor of glutathione can reduce inflammation and oxidative stress in the brain and improve memory and markers for Alzheimer's disease. Improved glutathione levels can impact insulin sensitivity by reducing oxidative stress, improving mitochondrial function and reducing inflammation. One study on 20 patients over three weeks found insulin sensitivity significantly improved in those taking glutathione supplements. Another study found those taking N-acetylcysteine, the precursor to glutathione, also improved insulin sensitivity. The dosage used to improve insulin resistance is 1000 mg per day. Studies show that autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, psoriasis and type 1 diabetes are all linked to low glutathione levels and increased oxidative stress. Various small studies have found that boosting glutathione through nutrients such as N-acetylcysteine and glycine can help reduce inflammation, protect cells and improve symptoms by supporting immune regulation. Glutathione is needed for detoxification in the liver, can reduce oxidative stress and oxidative stress is a factor in the development of fatty liver disease. Oral glutathione given for four months in those with fatty liver disease had improved liver enzymes and liver fat content. N-acetylcysteine, the precursor to glutathione, was also found to be effective for fatty liver disease. The dosage used for glutathione for fatty liver disease is 300 mg per day. Glutathione has recently become very popular in those looking to lighten their skin. Melanin is a pigment produced by our body that gives our skin, hair and eyes their colour. Glutathione stimulates the synthesis of pheomelanin which produces the lighter red and yellow pigments to eumelanin which produces the darker black and brown pigments. It protects against oxidative stress and oxidative stress is a factor in melanin production. It inhibits an enzyme called tyrosinase which then prevents the production of melanin. In a 2020 review of three randomized clinical trials, two out of the three trials showed significant results, but only to certain parts of the body. It was more effective in sun exposed parts of the body, particularly to those over the age of 40. The glutathione group was significantly better than the placebo in improving wrinkles, skin elasticity in both sun exposed and sun protected skin. The dosage for skin whitening is 250 milligrams once or twice a day. You will now find intravenous glutathione being used in beauty clinics for skin whitening. There has only been one small study where half of the group were given two injections a week of glutathione for six weeks. After the treatment, six patients in the glutathione group found improvement in skin lightening compared to three patients from the placebo group. Six months after completing the treatment, almost all the patients lost the skin whitening benefits. The largest problem with IV glutathione is not just that it doesn't have proven efficacy, but it can cause adverse effects effects such as liver problems and a risk of anaphylaxis. Dosages for oral glutathione range from 250 to 1000 mg per day. Taking it on an empty stomach can help to optimize absorption and it's best to split the doses two or three times a day. It may also be beneficial to take it with 500 mg of vitamin C which is an antioxidant that can also help to improve glutathione levels. Glutathione taken orally does have poor wire availability, which means it doesn't get absorbed very well. To counter this, there are some forms of glutathione that have been manufactured to help with absorption, including those using liposomal formulations or in sublingual form. There haven't been many side effects seen with oral glutathione. It could possibly cause some stomach issues such as bloating and cramping, but it usually would go away on its own. It could also cause allergies or a rash. Long-term use may decrease your zinc levels. The glutathione that 
comes directly from foods doesn't necessarily get absorbed well but there are some foods that can promote the production of glutathione these include sulfur rich foods such as garlic onions brussels sprouts cauliflower kale and cabbage foods high in selenium which is a cofactor in the production of glutathione foods high in vitamin c and e can help recycle glutathione and support antioxidant networks and additionally whey protein is rich in the amino acid cysteine and cysteine is needed to make glutathione in supplements you can take glutathione directly but you can also take other supplements that can help improve your glutathione levels these include n-acetylcysteine alpha lipoic acid milk thistle and sami so that comes to the end of the video on glutathione if you found this video useful please consider subscribing thanks for watching and i hope to see you next time bye